proclamation of 1763 was a document signed by King George III. It specified the areas in which the colonies couldn't settle and the areas that were reserved for the Native Americans in what was overall a futile attempt to maintain peace. But what led up to the construction and signing of this proclamation? Let's go back. We go back 10 years to 1753 when the conflict first started. The conflict was originally between the French and British over who would be able to settle the Ohio River Valley, which contained very fertile land for farming. A conflict between George Washington and French troops, accused of trespassing on British land in the spring of 1754, initiated the French and Indian War. Native Americans allied with the French against British forces, believing that it was in their best interest. The French and Native Americans were successful in the beginning, leading raids in the backcountry, which British colonists struggled to maneuver around. However, the colonists came up with a new approach, destroying Native American towns and cutting off resources. Once the French ceded, the Native Americans had no choice but to do the same. In order to officially end and lay out terms for the war, the Treaty of Paris in 1763 was constructed. The Treaty of Paris was signed on February 10, 1763 by Great Britain, France, Spain, and Portugal. It brought an end to the French and Indian War, but it also illustrated the transition of land between European authorities. France had to cede all of its Northern American claims and even some other land around the globe. Also, Britain gained Florida and authority in Honduras from Spain. The treaty promoted the idea of peace and the avoidance of any hostile encounters between opposing powers. It stated that all prisoners must be reunited with their respective country and any locations occupied by troops must be vacated. King George, in his attempt to soothe the relations between colonists and Native Americans, drew a line between the colonies and the newly established reservation. This line was outlined in the Proclamation of 1763. It started at the meeting place of the Flint and Chattahoochee Rivers and continued west to the Atlantic. This left the area of West Florida extending between east to west the Mississippi and Chattahoochee Rivers and north to south the Atlantic Ocean and the 31 degree latitude line. The proclamation line then followed the Chattahoochee River northwards. On the northern end, it ran alongside the St. John's River, beginning at its headwaters and continuing to the southern tip of Lake Nemes. The proclamation forbade any colonists from crossing the boundary with an intent to make settlement and required anyone who had previously settled out west to return to the east. However, licensed fur traders were given special permission to hunt in the Ohio and Mississippi valleys. Colonists were very interested in farming, hunting, and such fertile areas, but were also not allowed to buy land from the Native Americans. Even though Britain was in control, they had virtually no way of enforcing the proclamation. With minimal military presence and the high enthusiasm Americans had for venturing out west, many people settled without regard for the law. The British claimed that there was enough land east of the proclamation line and in Canada. After gaining control over Quebec, Britain encouraged colonists to move and help strengthen the economy there. Only some British colonists actually moved to Quebec, and their presence in the heavily French-populated community proved to do more harm than good. The majority of people living in Canada were French Catholics, and they would have to accept New English-speaking Protestants. In order to aid the assimilation process for the first time under British control, Canada created a constitution that would help make this process easier. Since many French fur traders left in order to pursue better hunting areas, the English merchants began to take hold in the economy. This upper class of English-speaking people oriented Quebec's reliance on Paris to London. In light of this, and in order to solidify British control, Britain appointed a governor, General James Murray. Murray had a difficult job appointing members of the community to government positions, because under English law, Catholics could not hold office. Overall, though, he made many improvements for the French community. However, due to his lack of support from Protestant residents, he was forced to step down in 1766 which led to turmoil and a lack of agreement over different interpretations of the proclamation. Overall, the proclamation had a negative impact on Canada. The proclamation of 1763 also had a negative impact on the colonies. The colonists saw it as an attempt by the British to disservice the growing American economy. But generally, the proclamation of 1763 lacked a powerful presence for the colonists. And since they were already frustrated with British rule, they ultimately dismissed the regulations outlined in the proclamation. Paris was the result of the French and Indian War. It led for France to give up a lot of its land to Britain. The proclamation of 1763 was supposed to be a way to specify circumstances between Native Americans and the colonies. However, it had different consequences than intended. And that's how the proclamation of 1763 shaped the way North America looks today. Thank you for watching.